Hello, I'm George from Panoceres Yacht Charters and today we are going to show you our Beneto 41 Bolero. The layout of this yacht is three cabins and two heads. Before we proceed to the technical presentation of the yacht, let's have a quick look at the living spaces of the yacht. So, let's start with the cabins. In the stern right cabin, we have all the master switches of the yacht. Here we have all the electrical switches of the yacht. The general master switch of everything is right here. Here we have the master switch for the engine battery and here for the service batteries. These two thermical fuses are one for the folding platform and one for the electric windlass. Here we have the thermical fuse for the anchor winch. If you put too much pressure on the anchor winch, the thermical fuse may trip. We are now in the front cabin and under the bed we can find the bow thruster. Here we have the motor of the bow thruster. Inside here we have the battery for the bow thruster. The red switch in front is the master switch for the bow thruster. This master switch should remain on at all times unless there is a case of emergency. Now let me show you the toilets. Here we have the shower area. You have this black button right here when you want to take the water out. If you press this button once, the pump will work for 20 seconds automatically. Here we have the toilet. To flush in, you take the lever to the left and you pump. To flush out, you take the switch to the right and you pump again. In order to avoid any kind of blockage, you should not throw any kind of objects inside the bowl. This yacht on the stern right toilet is equipped with a black water tank. The waste tank valve is inside here in this locker. In this position, the valve is open. If you want to use the waste tank, you need to turn the switch to the right. When you want to empty the waste tank, you return the valve to the previous position. Here we have the PIRB. This is the floating light. The floating light will work only when it gets in contact with water. Here we have the plotter inside. The plotter inside and the plotter outside are connected. So. In order to have all the information available, you need to have both of them on at the same time. Here we have the radio. The radio can work with USB, auxiliary and Bluetooth. This yacht is equipped with two speakers inside and two speakers outside. Inside this locker, we have the VHF. Distress button is right here. To switch the VHF on, you do it from here. To adjust the volume, you do it from this button. And to change the channel from here. To switch off the VHF, you do it from here. In the next locker, we have the first aid kit, some battery operated navigation lights, and the VHF battery charger. From this side and the left, we have the 230 volts. When the yacht is connected to shore power, you see red light here. Battery charger switch, AC outlet switch. This switch belongs to the water heater. If you want to use the water heater through the shore power cable, you switch it on from here. 
you wait half an hour, you close it, and then you make your sour. If the yacht is not connected to the shore power, you can have hot water while the engine is running. From this side and on, it's 12 volt. Cabin light switch controls all the lights inside, the shower drains in the toilets, and the electric fans are on the yacht. Fridge unit. This switch controls both fridges. If you want to use one of the two, you need to close one of the two manually. This is a spare fuse. Here we have the fresh water pump. When the fresh water pump works, you see green light here. This switch belongs to the bilge pump. If you want to use the bilge pump manually, you press the switch to the right. If you want to have it automatic, you press it on the left. This switch is for the instruments. This switch controls the plotters inside, the plotters outside, the autopilot and all the instruments. Deck light here, anchoring light, engine light and sailing light. In this panel, you see information from these switches. Here, you see the engine level voltage and the service battery voltage. This is for the water tanks. Tank number one and tank number two. And this is for the diesel tank. Now, let's see the items stored around the saloon. First of all, on the left side, in this locker, inside we have binoculars, the Greek waters pilot, the maps of the yacht, and some winch handles. Under here, we have one of the two fire extinguishers, the bag with the flares, and the bosun's chair. Inside here, we have all the navigational equipment of the yacht. First aid regulations, mirror signals, hand bearing compass, divider and parallel ruler, and some padlocks. And last, inside here, we have the toolbox, black ball signals, and under them, all the manuals of the yacht. Under the right side of the couch, in the left, we have all the life jackets and the lifelines. Next, we have the battery for the VHF, and here we have the fresh water pump. This yacht is equipped with two water tanks, one in the stern and one in the bow. This tank is for the bow and this for the stern. When you want to switch between the two water tanks, you need first of all to close the fresh water pump from the panel, and then you will need first to close the one tank and open the other one. Then you can go again to the panel and switch on the fresh water pump and then you will need to open one tap to take the air out of the system. And on the right, under here, we have the water heater. We are now in the kitchen area. Cups, plates and glasses and also cooking equipment can be found inside these lockers. And also here. Here we have one of the two fridge units. To adjust the power on this one, you did from here. This specific fridge is equipped with a pump. If you have water inside the fridge, you can press this switch to take all the water outside of the fridge. The second fridge unit is located here. This one has a small deep freezer on top and you can adjust the power from the black switch inside. Here we have the foot pump. To operate the foot pump, you can do it by pressing this lever. You can switch between using fresh water and sea water from the lever in the left. About the stoves, to switch them on, you need to press here inside, turn to the left and use a lighter. 
After you keep it for a few seconds to heat up, you can release it. Then you can adjust the power and if you want to switch it off, you bring it in the middle. The same applies for the other one. Now about the oven. You can lock and unlock the door from here. If you want to have the flame on the top, you need to press this button inside, turn to the right and use the lighter. Again here, you need to keep it up for a few seconds to heat up. To switch off, you bring it in the middle. To have the flame at the bottom, you press inside and you turn to the left. For this oven, you can either have the flame on top or the flame at the bottom, not both at the same time. The gas valve is located inside here. In this position, the gas is on. If you want to switch off the gas, you need to turn the switch to the right. Inside here, we have the engine room. This yacht is equipped with a 40 horsepower Yanmar engine. The consumption of this engine is about 4.5 liters per hour at 2200 rpm. You can check the cooling water from the plastic bottle inside and the engine oil from the dipstick on the left. Now let's start with the outside of the yacht. First of all, let's see inside the lockers. Under here we have a canister with 20 liters of spare diesel in case of emergency, 5 liters of unleaded fuel for the outboard, shore power cable, second anchor with 20 meters of chain. On the other side, we have the life raft, second fire extinguisher, oars for the dinghy, and the 50 meter floating line. Here we have the manual bilge pump. The lever for the manual bilge pump is located inside this locker. When sailing, the rails should be attached like this. The top ones should attach together and the lower ones in these two points. The gangway should be in this position. Also, if you want, you can attach a small rope around the gangway and the rail. When you're docked and you want to use the gangway, first of all, you need to untie the two safety knots from here. And then, while taking the halyard up, you need to give a small push for the gangway. Then, push the lower part, and after, you need to adjust it. The gangway needs to stay 20 centimeters over the dock. After you have secured the rope in the breaker, apply two safety knots over the breaker to be sure. To open the platform, first of all, you need to take out the back rails. Then, if you come here, you will find one rope under the platform. You need to pull this rope and lift the top side a bit up. After you have made sure that from both sides the platform has disengaged and there are no obstacles behind the platform, you can press the down button. When the platform goes level, it's okay. When the platform is deployed, no more than two people should be standing on it. Jumping is not allowed in this platform. Under here, we can find the cockpit shower. Here and on the other side, we have empty space. You can connect the shore power cable here. And you can find the two gas bottles inside here. The place to put the emergency tiller is right here and the lever for the tiller is located inside this locker. The platform should be used only when the yacht is stopped. Now, to close the platform, 
first you need to check again for obstacles then you will need to press the up button when the platform reaches this position you need to come here pull the black rope again push down release the rope and then check that from both sides the platform has been connected on this side we have one of the two multifunctional displays and here we can find the filling point for the stern water tank the filling point for the water tank that is located in the bow of the yacht is right here on the stern left side you can find the filling point for the diesel tank on this side we can also see the plotter the second multifunctional display and the controller of the autopilot about the autopilot after you have set your course you can press auto this display will go for the autopilot automatically plus 10 degrees minus 10 degrees plus 1 minus 1 and stand by here you can also see the position of the rudder you can circle through the pages from this button here you can see the speed of the yacht and the depth the depth meter is located under the hull of the yacht and it measures from the physical location of the sensor the draft of this yacht is 2.1 meters in this display you can also see the wind and other useful information about the plotter you can zoom in and zoom out from here or from here you can also see the depth meter and the heading about the engine to start the engine you need to press first this button and then wait for the alarm now you need to press the top button after the engine has started, you need to check that water is coming out from the left side of the yacht. If you want to charge your batteries, you can press this red button inside in order for the gear to go neutral and then open the throttle. 1200 RPMs is enough to charge the batteries. When you bring the lever to the middle, the pin will go out automatically. To go forward, First, you need to block the gear and then open the throttle. From forward to reverse, you need to wait a few seconds for the revs to go down. To go reverse, you first block the gear and then you open the throttle. When sailing, gear should always be in neutral position. To switch on the bow thruster, you need to press both buttons for one second. Now it's on. To go right, to go left. The proper way to use the bow thruster is no more than 10 seconds at a time. Then you make a small pause for one, two seconds and then you can use it again. To switch off the bow thruster, you need to press again both buttons for one second. Now, to stop the engine, first of all, you need to press this button till the engine stops. And then you need to keep this button pressed for four seconds. Here we have the anchor winch. First of all, in order for the anchor winch to work, you will need to have the engine running. This yacht has 65 meters of chain and in the end there is a security rope. The controller for the anchor winch is located inside here. When dropping the anchor, for the first few meters you need to go slow. To go up, we 
When taking up the anchor, you should go slow in the last few meters in order for the anchor not to hit the hull. Then the chain should not be very tight. When taking up the chain, you need to make sure that the chain is coming up vertical to the surface of the water. Otherwise, if the chain is too tight when coming up, there is a possibility that the thermical fuse of the anchor winch trips. Also, when sailing, the best place to store the dinghy is right here while it's being tied up from both sides. Also, before you open the Genoa sail, make sure that all the top hatches remain shut in order not to get caught by the seats of the Genoa. About the mainsail, this yacht has a full button mainsail with two reefs. To know which reef is which, you need to check the boom. The reef that is closer to the stern is the first reef and the reef that is closer to the bow is the second reef. In order to open the mainsail, you will need to open the lazy back from here and from the right side of the yacht all the way to the back. When you don't use the mainsail, we recommend that you hook the mainsail halyard under here and tight it. In this case, the sail cannot go up in case of strong wind. Also, if the wind permits, we recommend that you leave the reefs loose inside the lazy bag so it will be much easier for you to open the main sail when you do it again. Also, in order to open the main sail, you need to maneuver the yacht towards the wind. For the Geno of this yacht, in order to open it, you need first to open the brake for the roller right here. Then you will need to pull the one of the two Genoa seats depending the wind. Also, you will need to control this rope when the Genoa is opening so that the sail doesn't open with too much force. When you want to close the Genoa sail, you need to pull this rope while at the same time controlling the Genoa seat that it's in use. Then you will need to close the brake for the roller and then secure both Genoa seats. With this electric winch, you can operate the main sail. To use it, you need to press this button. If you're traveling with small children on board, or if you want to use this winch manually, we would recommend to close the thermical fuse from inside in order to avoid any kind of accidents. Also, when using this electric winch to operate the main sail, be very careful to avoid any kind of damage in the sail. Now, let me show you how to operate the outboard. Before you start the engine, make sure that these screws are tightened. To start the outboard, you need first to open the fuel from here. Open the choke when it's cold. We open the air vent and then we bring the gas to start position. Then we pull the cord out till we find resistance. Then we should pull it harder. When you start, close the choke. The propeller works automatically. So when I open the throttle, the propeller will start. Now, to switch off the outboard, you need to press this button till the motor stops. Then you will need to close the air vent tight so no water is coming in and then close the fuel. This outboard is air cooled so you won't see any water coming out of it. But in order for the outboard to operate properly, it needs to be inside the water, not outside in the deck. From all the Panoseris Yacht Charters team, thank you for watching our video. If you have any questions, we are more than happy to answer them. Let us know how you feel about our video in our social pages. We are looking forward into welcoming you on board.